Hi folks, now no matter who you are on this planet, no matter how long you've been trading, I believe we are all in a continuous state of education. Or at least we should be, certainly when it comes to trading. And I've been trading for over 30 years. I run a trading room here at forexsignals.com. I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of members asking me every week what books they should be reading. And I'm really inspired when I get these questions. It shows me that my members are always wanting to further their education. They don't just want to hand it to them on a plate. And I have read pretty much every book that is out there. I've read some bad ones and some really good ones. Now what I'm going to be doing over the coming months is doing a basic book review of some of the decent books that I have read over the times. Now I'm going to start off with a book written by Jack D. Schwager called Market Wizards. It's a great book. Come into my library now and let's review. Now clearly this is not my personal library, but with the help of some green screens and some magic technology, here we are. And I love those high ceilings as well. Now these books have got to be one of the best trading books that I have read in all my years. Not a trading book in the sense that it's going to tell you what an RSI indicator is or what a MACD indicator is good for, how to manage risk and the use of stops and so forth. No, it's basically an author, Jack D. Schwager, going out there on the field interviewing some of the most successful traders on the planet. Now, the first version of this book called Market Wizards was first published in the 1970s. But don't let that detract you from the relevance of this book. The interviews that he held in those days still hold immense value today. After all, trading has been an occupation for centuries. And the skills and the traits that made up successful traders all those years ago still hold very true today. Now, since the first publication of this book, there have been a number of revisions to the book. And there's even been an up-to-date version interviewing some of the more recent traders. It's called the New Market Wizards as well. You know, it's often said in this world, if you want to achieve success in any field, then it's best to surround yourself with others that have achieved success in that particular field. And that's exactly what you'd be doing by reading this book. It's why these books are so great. It gives you an insight into what the leaders of this industry are doing and what they are thinking. Now, before I continue, before I get into the main guts of the book, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so. Now, make sure you follow the stories as well as I update these throughout the trading week, looking for trading opportunities, entries and so forth. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and of course on Facebook. If you follow us on Facebook, you can tune in live every Monday afternoon, 2pm London time for a live streaming event where we look at market opportunities for the week ahead. Now, in the original Market Wizards, the book starts off with Jack basically questioning markets. Can you make money in the markets? He questions the efficient market hypothesis. That basically says that every known fact about a particular trading entity is already reflected in the price. And therefore, if price is correct, it's pretty much impossible to accurately predict the future. He then goes on to liken the markets with a chess tournament, which I thought was a great similarity. Every participant in the chess tournament, they know the rules of chess. They know how to play chess and they know the best moves because they've read them in the books from the previous grandmasters. But a true chess champion, he's able to capitalize on the mistakes and the emotions of other players. He concludes that the markets are generally driven by emotions, human emotions. And if you can learn to detect these emotions, which are in fact generally um, irrational in the first place, then that skill can be used to profit from the markets. I thought that was a great analysis. He confirms his view that markets can be beat, but it's not easy. That you have to have some innate skill. Now, Jack was a successful trader in his own right from the early days. In fact, he was able to turn several accounts with tenfold gains. But what he found was, Every time he made these tenfold gains, he would start to lose and then start to give it all back. And he basically put this down to the emotions, which really inspired him to write these books in the first place, to see what the pros were like. Now, the wizards that he interviewed in these books have all beaten the markets by statistical impossibilities. And the idea was that he may be able to start to generate some thought-provoking ideas with these interviews that will help the aspiring trader. And I believe they do just that. 
Okay, so I'm now going to go through a few of the hand-picked sample of the wizards that he interviewed. Now, at this juncture, I will say that I'm not affiliated with Jack D. Schwager at all. I'm certainly not affiliated with the publisher. I've never spoken to either of them. I have no um, gain of this at all financially. It's purely giving you an insight to the books that I think are worthwhile reading. In fact, you can buy the books on second-hand auction sites or even take them out of the library. It bothers me little. Now, first up was a wizard called Michael Marcus. Now, Michael Marcus was renowned initially for blowing up trading accounts. Maybe you've had the same experience. He started off with $1,000, turned into 30,000 bucks, and then he lost the lot. Then he refinanced, got 700 bucks, turned it into $12,000, and you guessed it, he lost the lot again. He was renowned for blowing up trading accounts when he first started, but he never gave up. He then met a guy called Ed Sakota, who basically taught him that he should be staying in trends, letting the profits run, cutting the losses early. He taught him also not to rely on others for advice, for their bias in the markets. Follow your own instinct. If you're following a trend, don't be de 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 detracted by what other people are saying. Uh, Michael Marcus was also a pit trader, pretty much like myself as well. So it's interesting for me uh, hearing his life stories about trading in the trading pits and the noise of the pits and how that obviously gave him clues or where trends were developing and so forth. That really resonated with me. The advice I took away from Michael Marcus in this book was basically keep with your own views, keep committed to your own conviction, get yourself a mentor. Uh, one of his big mentors was the next guy in the book that I want to talk about. Um, his name was Bruce Kovner. Bruce Kovner. Now, the biggest advice that Bruce gave in his interview was that you should be willing to make mistakes and to learn from them. He's quoted as saying, make your best judgment on a trade, be wrong and learn from it. Make your best judgment on a second trade, be wrong and learn from it. Make your best judgment on a third trade and double your money. He was asked what was the best advice you can, he can give to the aspiring trader. And he said here, position size. A greedy trader always blows out. So basically, don't be greedy. He often cites discipline in this interview, which really resonated with me as well. He basically never gets into a trade without knowing where he can get out. He cites risk management as the key to success as well. He always places stops on a trade. And he places stops where he basically doesn't think the stops will be hit. He was asked, can you make money from trading with automated strategies? Now, remember, this book was written before we have the automation that we have today. Uh, his view on the automation was, yeah, you can make money in automation, but markets are constantly changing. So uh, the algos don't change. So he still prefers to trade manually. He said the biggest reason for failure of traders is the impulsiveness of a trader. Impulsive traders lose money. Now, Bruce has had only one losing year at the time of uh, writing this book, and that was in 1981, and he lost 16% in the year. Now, I know some traders that lose 16% on one particular trade. So learn from Bruce, never have a losing year. If you have a losing year or losing trade, never let it wipe you out. Next up, you may have heard of this guy, Richard Dennis. Now, he was a legendary trader. He basically ran a $400 account into over $2 million over the years. What also resonated with me, he was also a pit trader like myself, and he talks a bit about how the screens are very, very different to the life in the trading pits, and I know how accurate that is, certainly. Um, his best trade, Richard Dennis, was on a $3,000 account. He basically lost $200 on that account. That's quite a big percentage on that account. But then what he did to get that $200 back, he went into revenge mode. He started to buy and t switch positions. He was going then go short and then go long uh, to try and get back his 200 bucks. By the end of the day, he had lost $1,200 on that $3,000 account. And this is Richard Dennis's best trade because it taught him never to do that again. So he learned a big lesson from that revenge trade. Now, Richard Dennis was also that guy 
behind the turtle trading experiment. You may have heard of it. It's basically with him and a colleague, basically were uh, debating whether you can teach a particular person to trade or whether it's actually just an innate skill or you're born with it. He basically believed that you can teach um, an individual to trade. So what they did, they did an experiment. They put out an application to, I think it was about a thousand applicants. They got a lot of replies back. They whittled it down to, I think it was about 12, uh, 12 traders and they put them through this very intense trading program. It so happens that all the 12 traders that undertook the program ended up multi-millionaires. And he basically puts this down to sticking to the rules. A very, very good interview indeed. And actually, uh, there's a book out there from Richard Dennis as well, The Way of the Turtle, which is also worth reading. Paul Tudor Jones. Now, Paul Tudor Jones, he discovered it's all about risk and position sizing. Now, I teach this, of course, in our trading room as well. I talk about it each and every day. Paul Tudor Jones was talking about it 30 years ago. It is still relevant. Risk control and position sizing. It's always easier to get back into a position than to get out of a losing position. He says a good trader should play great defence, not great offence. So he likens it to the uh, football game. He also likens trading to the game of poker. He says, be patient, only play your good hands. If you've got a bad hand, then fold. Basically, cut out of a losing trade and let the winning trades run. Ed Sakota. Now, I mentioned him a moment ago. He was one of the mentors for Michael Marcus. Now, Ed Sakota was one of the pioneers in automated trading. His main focus has been on psychology. He was asked, uh, what are the rules that he lives by as a trader? And he basically cited five rules. Cut your losses. Ride your winners, keep bets small, follow your rules without fail. And the last rule I thought was quite interesting, know when to break your rules. He's often quoted in trading as saying, everybody gets what everybody wants. Basically implying that winners want to win and losers want to lose. I'm not quite sure about that. Maybe take, uh, make your own analysis when you read the interview and read more about Ed Sakota. But he's often uh, quoted as uh, for that um, particular statement. Mark Weinstein. This was, um, I thought, a great interview. Uh, it's worth definitely reading this one. Basically, what are the trading rules you live by? Always do your homework. Don't be arrogant. How many traders have we seen in the past that lose because they're arrogant? Understand your limitations. Be your own person. Don't follow others. Be your own person. Don't trade until the opportunity presents itself. Knowing when to staying out of the market is important as knowing when to be in the market. Any final advice you'd have to the beginner trader? You have to know how to learn to lose. It's more important learning to lose than learning to win. Very, very good advice. Lastly, in this book, talk about uh, Tony Saliba. Tony Saliba, this was an interesting one. The only thing I took really from this interview was, uh, was that he never uses money to gauge his success. Money is basically just a counter of success. Looking at money can be a distraction. Looking at the dollars going in and out of your account. Uh, basically, we think of money in terms of opportunity. If you've just lost $1,000, you think about what you could have bought with that $1,000. If you just made $1,000, you think what you can buy with that $1,000. These are all heightening the emotions, and we know that the emotions are killing a lot of traders. I guess video gamers that basically look to score points um, would make good traders but um, certainly uh, not to pay too much attention to the actual dollars, I think is great advice there from Tony Saliba. Now, The New Market Wizards, I think this is a great book. Okay, so basically he's interviewed some more recent traders over the years. Um, there's lots of content in this book as well. One of the ones that um, stuck out in my mind was a guy called Blair Hull. Now, this book basically uh, used to be a professional gambler on the roulette and uh, blackjack tables in the casinos. He was banned, apparently, from most casinos out there. So that's why he got into the markets. He basically talks a lot about the differences between gambling and trading the markets with an edge. You've got to basically have a system. You've basically got to have an edge. 
And if you don't know your trading edge, if you don't know your method, the chances are you don't have one. So it's important to have an edge and then to use money management. But if you often heard the analogy between gambling and trading, it's well worth paying attention to what Blair Hull says in this book. Now, one of the big observations that I've made by reading both of these books was that there was a distinct lack of women traders. In fact, there was only one. Her name was Linda Bradford Rashkeek. I must be pronounced that wrong. She draws the similarities between reading music and reading the markets. Anyone that can read music well should be able to understand patterns and should be able to make it as a trader. She has an innate skill of spotting price patterns. She is so confident, but also she is so dedicated. She was trading right up to the ninth month of her pregnancy. And when she was asked, did you trade in your pregnancy? She goes, I couldn't trade while giving birth. It was at four o'clock in the morning. But apart from that, she would have been trading. So she is very passionate about what she does. She basically says, um, that giving away her trading skills or her trading strategy wouldn't make a blind bit of difference to the people that want to follow it because people can't follow her rules and they can't even follow their own rules. That's what makes most traders lose money. They're unable to follow um, rules and have no discipline. Asked what advice you'd give to the novice trader, she replied, get close to other successful traders. And that's exactly what I recommend you do as well. One of the reasons why, in fact, we hold our trading room. We're all sitting in there, successful traders, all discussing market, uh, um, market events and um, trading opportunities as well. So that's right, get close to other successful traders, which is basically the whole idea of these books in the first place. She says, find a niche in the market and master it. Be the master of one and not the master of all. Very, very wise. I've seen so many traders over the years. I've got 20 different strategies and they're losing on all. Best to master one and be a master um, of that. Have passion. Well, she certainly oozes passion as well. I'm actually quite surprised to see only one female trader interviewed in these books. I've often found that female women traders are much more successful than us men traders. For one, they tend to be more disciplined as traders. They leave their egos at the door and the ego kills a lot of traders as we all know. So maybe in future books, if he does decide to do any more, we'll see some more women traders in there. I certainly hope so. So I really recommend these books. If you want to surround yourself, if you want to get inside the heads of those successful traders, it's well worth a good read. Now, I hope you liked this video. Hope you found it useful. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. Don't forget to leave a comment. I'd love to, leave you, I'd love to read your comments, especially on this type of video. Um, let me know if you want me to review any other books. Pretty much I've read them all. So I would love to do that for you if indeed there is a desire. Until the next video, happy trading and good luck.